Deathloop is a ton of fun. We made a before you buy video on it. We really like it. And it's a weird game with some things that are worth explaining. And some things, in fact, that the game doesn't do so well. So we're here with some tips. We got 10 of them. So let's get started off with number 10. One of the most powerful weapons in this game is one that you can actually get really, really easily, as long as you've got the shift slab. This thing is a souped up machine pistol that's silenced. Seriously, this thing is incredibly good and really useful if you play stealth and it can carry you for most of the game. The visionaries usually have some kind of powerful weapon hidden around their areas, usually hidden somewhere in their personal rooms. Uh, this one can be found in Igor's little lab area in the complex map. It's practically right outside your door. You can literally pick it up in less than a minute if you know where to look. Just exit from the tunnel, get to the roof of this building and then shift through the security lasers protecting the skylight. Uh, this is the part where you need shift. It's, it's not impossible to get it if you you don't have that power, but hitting those lasers activates all the turrets in the room, so it's a lot easier to deal with if you just shift inside. The gun is on a box at the end of the room. It's pretty hard to miss, and there you go. Uh, if you actually want to hold on to this thing, and you probably will, then you'll need 8,000 residium in the bank to infuse it, but that's, you know, the standard fare for what you're getting here. And also, I think this is very important to point out, definitely look around, feel free to explore. So don't be like us, don't live with regrets, find that good stuff. Now over at number nine, uh, the best slab to get first, it's shift, obviously. Like, we're not gonna tell you how to play. You're free to do what you want, but it's Blink from the Dishonored games, and it's exactly as good as it is here in those games. I, you get it from Charlie, whose area can be a little tricky to get through early in the game, but as long as you don't let yourself get too overwhelmed, it shouldn't be too difficult, as Charlie himself doesn't really put up too much of a fight. He's kind of just annoying. But Shift opens up the game so much that it almost feels essential. A lot of the other slabs are good and very useful in a lot of instances, but being able to teleport around is the best. It allows you to access a lot of areas you can't reach normally. It makes it much easier to be stealthy. It's just incredibly good and even comes in handy if you're facing off against a Juliana if you're being invaded. Stealth is good in this game and shift makes stealth way more viable. So get it. You don't have to get it first, but get it early at least because we had it equipped the entire time because it opened up the game so much more. Next over at number eight, uh, most of the mechanics in this game are explained in detail, but some things are left for the player to discover for themselves. So here's some fun stuff we found out just from messing around. Uh, one noteworthy thing, you can grab guys from behind waist high walls. It's not something that'll come up all the time, but uh, when the option appears, it's a safe and easy way to take a guy out. And it's something that maybe you wouldn't have tried initially. Along with that, you can do an aerial assassination. Also, if there are enemies hanging out in weird positions where the game won't let you execute them, just kick them. It'll take a few kicks to kill them, but it totally works. These types of guys probably aren't much of a danger to you normally, but hey, it never hurts to be thorough. Enemies won't notice you if they're drinking as well. Uh, like if there's a guy throwing back a bottle of booze in front of you, they won't react to your presence at all. So it makes them pretty easy prey. Which leads us to number seven. Here's a simple one, but an incredibly useful thing to know. Uh, the game teaches you about hacking right from the start. You know, just look at the thing and hold the button down to hack it. It's pretty easy, but the range on the thing is not great. And the game loves to position turrets in really hard to hack spots. The solution's actually pretty simple though. If you manage to start a hack on something, just keep the button held down and then duck back behind cover. You might think that losing line of sight will break the hack, but in most instances with us, as long as you keep the button held down, it'll actually work. We don't know if this is intentional or if it was designed to be this way, but we took advantage of it quite a bit. Backing up too much will break the hack, so be careful not to move too much, but it won't take too long to get into the groove of peeking out of cover, starting a hack, and then just ducking back down. It's incredibly easy to pull off once you get the hang of it, and it can make it a lot easier to get through certain annoying turret sections of the map. Eventually, you will get a perk that drastically improves the tracking range, so you won't really have to do this anymore, but in the earlier days in Black Reef, it's gonna really help you out. Now, next over at number six, if you've seen the trailers, you probably already know the premise of this game, but uh, what they don't tell you is that there's a pretty lengthy kind of prologue section. If you wanna explore around, it's so much better to wait until after this whole part is done with. Basically, uh, once you get the power of infusion, that's when the real game starts, because before that, you can't actually keep anything you find between runs. So anything you find in this early area, weapons or trinkets or whatever, will not carry over. You have to get through the initial investigation 
investigation and get the infusion power before it's actually worth going around and exploring the world because then you can actually make some progress. Takes about an hour and a half, two hours, give or take, to get to this point as long as you just focus on completing the mission objectives the game gives you. But once you're done, you can find out what those glowy, glitchy looking things in the environment do. Yes, this is kind of a basic one, but we wanted to follow up with what we said earlier where you should explore in this game because the good stuff is out there. It's just a little out of reach. And because people keep going into this game thinking it's more of an open-ended thing uh, that, that they should just explore around right from the start, where really all that will do is end up slowing you down. Just follow the objectives until you get infusion and then the game sets you out and do whatever you want. Next over at number five, uh, keep in mind that while you're playing this game, uh, at no point does the game autosave. There is no autosave. So if the game crashes, and uh, we've seen reports of it crashing on PC, and we've had a lot of personal instances of it happening on PS5, you lose your progress. Whatever map you're in, whatever you've been doing, it's gone. So depending on how you choose to play the game, that can mean like 40 minutes of lost progress, possibly, or at least when you're starting out. A good thing to do is just focus on completing the arsenal leads at the expense of everything else. By that, we mean just spend all your energy going after a specific target, be it a weapon or one of the visionary slabs, doesn't matter. But try to focus on that rather than trying to fully explore the whole environment. Because once you get that weapon or slab, don't screw around. Rush back to the exit and infuse it and have the game autosave so you're not wasting your time. You know, we're not saying you should speed run the game or anything. Feel free to explore. We keep pushing that. But if you want to minimize lost progress, then the smart thing to do is focus on getting this checklist done with first. Down to number four, another little tip for beginners, turrets are your friends. The hacked turrets can be incredibly powerful to use against the enemy, as long as you do a little planning. Uh, leave these things out in the open and they'll get destroyed in seconds, but put one behind a door or a narrow choke point and they're just absolutely killer because the AI is pretty dumb. Seriously, once you've learned an area and know the exits and entrances, it's possible to easily clear a zone out just by putting down a few well-placed turrets. They're especially effective when placed right behind a closed door. You know, like the AI seems to kind of struggle with it a bit with dealing with it while trying to get through a door. So they'll just all just go down pretty easily. Uh, turrets are also really good for taking out visionaries. If you know where these guys like to go when they're alerted, you can just drop a turret down in their path and set all the enemies up and just wait for that visionary killed message to appear on screen. That's the gist. Wide open areas are terrible for turrets, but closed off areas with lots of doors and a few entrances and stuff are great for them. If you want to go last out early in the game when you're not that tough, then having a turret or two on your side can just make things a lot easier. Just be careful not to stand directly in their fire because they can still hurt you. Down to number three, from our experience, getting into a straight up firefight will usually lead to your death in this game, especially early on. Sure, when it's only two or three guys you're dealing with, it's pretty simple to wipe them out. But when you're in a big open area swarming with enemies, it's real easy to get overwhelmed, but there is a solution and it's just to hit and run. Personally, uh, we found stealth to be the easiest way to approach most situations, but you're inevitably gonna get caught. And when you do, just pop the guy who found you and then make a break for it. Enemies lose you fast in this game, and you get the added benefit of drawing most of the guards away from their normal patrols. So usually if you get caught in a big area, all attention is focused on the spot they found you. So you can circle around and sneak past most of the remaining guards, or if you wanna just do more hit and run tricks. Now what makes this tactic so powerful is how quickly guards switch off from alert status. If you get far enough away, they'll usually give up pretty soon after. And like we said before, these guys aren't the brightest by design, so take full advantage of that fact. Don't get stuck in a stand-up fight. Just a few shots can take you out and waste one of your precious lives, but using hit and run tactics can get you through certain shootouts pretty easily. Down to number two, have you noticed these things around? They're these automatic terminals that require a code to unlock, and you might think going after Gideon will unlock them for you, but that's actually not the case. Having the code for these things is actually pretty useful because you can use them to get access to certain things that can be difficult or annoying to find on your own. Now, the code for these things can actually be found in Fia's hangout at Fristad Rock. You'll need to hunt around a little bit, but if you manage to get to the back entrance of this place, then you can find this room containing a broken 
broken delivery machine. Remember it or take a screenshot or something because it doesn't get remembered for you automatically. It only gets added to your log after you use the code for the first time on one of the delivery machines. And how these things work is kind of complicated. Using one in the morning will give you the option of delivering an item to a certain district. You'll need to think ahead a little bit because the only way to actually obtain the item is to travel to that district at a later time of day and get it from the delivery machine. You can send either a battery, a crank wheel, a nullifier, or a turret, depending on the circumstances, and these things can be pretty useful. Uh, nullifiers are pretty rare normally, and while they're annoying for you to deal with, using them on a visionary can save you a lot of trouble, as they will nullify all slab powers in the vicinity. If you're secret hunting, the crank wheel is really useful as well. Wheels are rare and annoying to find in the world, so just having one you can order to unlock stuff is a lot easier than trying to hunt these things down naturally, because you're going to lose a lot of time. Now down to number one, let's talk about the PC issues and some fixes. A lot of people are complaining about the offset crosshair, but thankfully that's an easy fix. Just go into the settings, then to the HUD, then crosshair offset, and you can turn that off. On improving frames per second, we found that changing the shadow detail settings has the most noticeable effect on FPS. So crank that down if you're seeing a lot of noticeable slowdown. Some micro stuttering is probably gonna be unavoidable for certain players though, because if, even if you turn off V-Sync, the game still has an FPS limit of 120 FPS. So on certain monitors with certain hardware, there might be some unavoidable stuttering until either Bethesda patches the game or players find a workaround. I've seen some people claim that using Riva tuner to force V-Sync can help with this, but take that with a grain of salt. If you've got an AMD card, then Fidelity FX Super is, of course, really pretty useful. If you've got an NVIDIA card though, then uh, you don't get any upscaling options, which is a bummer right now. Basically, the PC version of this game does have some issues. Hopefully they'll get ironed out in the future, but right now, all we can offer are just a couple tips. And really, that's the whole point of this video. Some tips, some things the game doesn't really tell you. So hopefully this helped a little bit. And if you've got more, if you wanna leave any more tips in the comments for new players and beginners, definitely drop them down there. But if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out a little bit, clicking the like button's you gotta do it really helps us out and if you're new consider subscribing hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day but as always thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time